Welcome to the Three Haunted Podcast, where we bring you all things horror, supernatural, folklore, mythology, and all things that go bump in the night. This is your co-host, Ashley Lunar Goddess, guerrilla girl filmmaker and horror-loving cinephile. I'm your co-host, John Thomas, paranormal investigator, super smartass, and film lover extraordinaire. What's up, ghouls, gals, and all of our stargazing pals? In today's episode, we'll be talking about astrology and horoscopes. What do your star signs really say about you? Are horoscopes real, or are they just a bunch of phony baloney? Join us and our special guest to find out. But first, a word from our network sponsor. Are you looking for more awesome podcasts? Head on over to withoutyourhead.com for access to the Without Your Head podcast network, where you'll find a variety of podcasts sure to keep you entertained and coming back for more. Welcome back, everybody. Like Ashley said, we have a special guest today. Her name is Carol Starr. Carol, welcome to the show. Well, I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you. So tell us, Carol, about yourself. What is your experience in the astrology and horoscope world? Okay. Well, I started over 30 years ago. And when I was three years old, of course. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I was looking for something to do with my life. My kids were getting, you know, they were in school. And someone said, have you ever had your chart done? I said, what is a chart? (laughs) Yeah, what? So I went and had my chart done by my mentor who turned out to be, I was in love. And I thought I'm going to become, not only become an astrologer, but I'm going to become a well-known astrologer. And I I even hired a a girlfriend as a PR person. She acted as my PR person and got me on TV and radio. And and then I had my seven years, I had my 15 year, 15 minutes of fame, you know, which was about seven years. And and where then we moved, life changed for me. But I've always been with astrology and also um, with psychic. I am psychic, but not names, dates, and places. I just know when people talk to me what's going on in their lives and what's going to happen. Okay. So it's, it's like an intuitive gift that you yeah, like an emp- emp- empathic, but Got also it. I have predicted things to much to my surprise sometimes. Yeah. So how did you go about learning about astrology, especially back then? It's not like people could Google, right? It's, well, it's, it's not, let me hop on easier. Google. I used to have to do astrology charts by hand figure out all the math. Today you go online and at least I get my basic chart done in in about 30 seconds. So I had to do all the work and I did take a class. I took the lady who I did, you know, who I went and had my chart read, um, offered a class. And so I learned about the basics. I went to about four or five classes and then all it is really astrologers, you know, I hear so much, well, my moon is here in the sun, and this means that nothing means anything. It's the whole picture. Before you can call yourself an astrologer, you got to do at least a minimum of a thousand charts because you don't know what you're talking about. Trust me that it is a complicated yet simple. It can be simple without getting so crazy with all this different stuff that doesn't really have anything to do with the person. Because when I do a chart for someone, I always say, what is it that you want to know? Is it relationships? Is it career? Is it money? Is it finance? Is it, are you feeling stuck? And so people really appreciate having this very, very in tune reading about them. Because astrology can get way off and say, well, you've got Gemini in your fourth house. So this means you are. And that isn't right. Nothing means anything except the total and the human person. Now, when you say it's a lot of math, especially how, when you do it by hand, what kind of math are we talking? What? Oh, I don't do it anymore. It is figuring out, for, okay, here, the birth, the time, you know, there's different time zones. Mm-hmm. So when someone tells you they're born at 5 a.m., that can be anywhere different, anywhere in the United States or the world. So we have to reverse, we have to change everything over to a different time zone. I had to get a tutor to help. It was so, I mean, math is not my thing. So today I'm just so grateful Unfortunately, too, or fortunately, there are so many different methods of running charts. There's the whole house, there's sidereal, there's, there's tropical, there's, uh, there's just so many different ways. Vedic. Vedic is a big astrology movement, and it is just it's more about planets than the sun and the moon. It's a different, whole different theory behind it. And 
So you could be like uh, your birth date. You can tell me your birth date real quick. July 26. Okay. So we know that you are a Leo, but if I did your chart with one of the other systems, you might turn out to be a cancer or a Virgo. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I stick with one basic thing. I, I do tropical and I do whole house, whole sign. It's all equal houses. It's easy to do and it works. It's worked a hundred percent for me. Astrology is something that, of course, I, you know, I'm on TikTok and when I do a live video, there's only one question everybody asks. I'm a Scorpio. How do I get along with a Gemini? How's a Taurus with a Capricorn? And I thought, and they all know they're, it's amazing. They know their moon and rising sign. They know all the planets. They know the houses. And they'll tell me, oh, I have a stellium of planets. I know I'm crazy. I said, well, you might be crazy because you're crazy, not because you're playing a chart. Oh <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm being sort of you know, cheeky there a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I can feel that though. Some just that some people you do want to just say that too. <laughs> oh yes. Listen, I've had um, I do psychic readings on the phone, and I get a lot of calls. And this has been a very busy morning today. I mean, my phone, I and the problems people have. I just, I just try, and I'm I'm really very lucky because usually afterwards they always tell me they feel better and they feel more centered and they're happy with what's going on. Yeah, without having to tell them everything's going to be wonderful, which I don't do. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, some people do want just the validation of tell me what I want to hear. But then there are those that truly do just are coming with an open mind that are open to what messages they need to hear versus what they want to hear. Yeah, but mostly it's the ones that want to know good stuff. I think we're, we're all like, I mean, if you called up a psychic on the phone or you had your chart done, in your heart, you really want to feel, you want to hear good things, you know, and they're doing a chart to me. I'm going to say it's, it's a hundred percent positive because I tell them things that are wrong that I, they need to work on, but I don't make declarations because we are not God. Okay. I can't tell you that you're going to walk across the street tomorrow and your dog's going to get run over, you know, and it can show up on a chart. It can show up because you have free will, because you can decide I'm not going to walk the dog in the street, or you're not going to walk the dog at all. So it's not going to happen. So you can, we all have free will. I always say astrology is like a roadmap. You can go straight, left, right, make a U-turn, or you can go off the road because you have a choice to make anything you want to do in life, no matter what I tell you. So you said you take calls, you're doing the psychic calls. And I think when we had talked previously, you mentioned that for a really long time, you were in the United Kingdom, you were part of a, uh, I'm, yes, I'm not, I'm no longer with them. That was for astrology readings. And what happened is it, it was a, it's a celebrity messaging company and they decided to add a spiritual base to it. So they got life coaches and tarot card readers and me. And they were not prepared because celebrity messaging takes between 30 seconds and a minute and a half for these 30 and 40 and 40 minute readings that I think it broke down their machinery there. It wasn't working anymore. So they kind of had to let me go. And I am on my own with my own website now. And I am so much happier. I get to stay in touch with my clients. I write to them, ask how they're, I couldn't do this before. They, you know, if they want to recommend somebody or they want me to do a different chart, we could talk about it. And, you know, it's been great. And also, I don't have somebody taking out one third of the pay. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. So the calls that you're receiving now, they're from your, like through your website, right? Website well, no, traffic. these are just, they, the company I work for is called Everclear. And I don't, um, all my calls just come in from people going on there and reading my bio. Oh, okay. And I have some that are directly, I have what I call, they're called preferred customers, people that just ask for me. Mm -hmm. They don't, that they hear about me, but not, nowhere specific. But my readings, honestly, all come from uh, TikTok. Those are people that, that's where they find me for, and then they go to my website and they order. I have two video readings, different times. I do a written report. I do a Zoom and I do a telephone. So they have their choice of anything they want. Okay. Do you feel that by reading, putting together the astrology charts and reading and taking these calls, 
this is your purpose? Does this feel like this is something that once you started this journey and this path, it was like, aha, this is what I meant. I had my aha moment. And of course I've been doing astrology and how I got into doing the psychic readings. This company found me on TikTok and said, we'd like you to do a couple videos for us because we're adding astrologers. So, and then they said, would you like to join us? So they gave me interviews and I had never done this before. And I want to tell you something. I think I've had jobs and businesses. I may have told you this before between 60 and 70 in my lifetime. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. If someone says, you want to try this? I'll say, sure. You know, <laughs> you, want, you want to be our PR director? I didn't even know how to spell it. I said, absolutely. Yeah. Always said yes. I mean, never, never turned anything down that looked good to me. It, or I'm never afraid that I couldn't do it. I should have been. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's how we're always learning and growing, right? Being open to those avenues and paths. So what I do now is like my perfect life. I'm helping people. I get paid well. I mean, that's always nice to get paid for what, for your talents, but getting off the phone or getting a review on one of my readings and they tell me how much they appreciate it and how much they've learned and they feel and they want to, and they refer me to other people. This is what it's about, you know, is that I know that I'm, I am helping. I mean, people call me up crying and upset and disturbed. And when we get off the phone, they always, they'll write me a note afterwards and say, thank you. I'm feeling much better. And they stay in touch with me. I will stay in touch with them. Um, I don't mean for money. I mean, well, I will email them back and say, how are you doing? Is everything going okay? And, and, and I encourage them to ask simple questions that I can answer easily. Otherwise I have to have a conversation. I have some guy who calls me every day. He's in love with somebody and he wants to be sure. He has called me to say, I'm doing great today. How are you? Just to help talk to me just to have a conversation. How are I'm doing great. I still love her and I'm working on it. And of course we talk about it and everything, but I thought what a compliment to call me just to pay, you know, make money to talk to me. Sounds like you've become his like safe person, his confidant and a safe person. (laughs) Yeah. And it also, it just, um, it just makes me feel good in that some, first of all, most, a lot of my calls are not always happy people. So when I have somebody happy calling me, I feel really, really good. I do have a question for you because I know you mentioned there's the different like schools of astrology and the different right. charts. And I know, oh gosh, it was probably, I want to say years ago, but it's probably more of like over a decade ago where they said there was a system that actually had an additional sign in the charts, which made it, what was it? 13 signs? I've heard that and I've never looked into, I don't, you know, I don't like to fool around with what works well. It's not that I don't want to learn something new, but when I have a system that works so well and people and everything people will tell me that you got, and you got me perfectly. you got everything right about me. And I was using, there is a, it's an interceptive system where the 12 houses are intercepted. I thought that is so confusing. I, thought, I don't like that. You know, that's too much work. And I learned by the equal house system by somebody who was so revered in the, in Phoenix and around for her astrology readings. I thought, why go somewhere else when this works so well? And I've continued with it. Yeah, you find what speaks truest to you so that you can yeah, put your work out there. Don't we all, we all find it if you're going on a diet? There's 25 million diets today. There is are to the point where you're exhausted from them, but you'll pick out one that resonates best with you. Maybe it's going on a Mediterranean diet, or maybe it's going on a keto or not. I love all the names. Now we've got keto, we've got vegan, we've got paleo. You got your choice. And the bottom line is in dieting or whatever it is, is just change your eating habits and stick with it and eat healthy. Okay. You don't need to spend billions of dollars on people pepping you up and all that. Just take care of your body. It's worth it. Yeah. In the eighties and nineties, there was a big boom on like the psychic hotlines and there was like the ads out there. And I mean, there's still random ads, but it was big. Like I remember watching USA up all night and there was like at least 30 ads a night of calling into the psychic hotline. So oh, yeah. did you, have you found that like it's tapered down or do, is it still a pretty active thriving business without all the inundating ads? 
it is very, very, because people today are living in a very tough world. Okay, our landscape, besides the world unrest, the inflation, the border, I mean, we have so many problems going on in our world. And then they have their personal little world that feels very disrupted too. And I think that one influences the other a lot. So they're in very much need to talk to somebody and I think it's I think it's alive and well, and astrology goes up and down too. And it's very it's high right now with the Generation X is it in the younger millennials. I'm going to say um, my readings are mostly women in their early 20s, and sometimes I get them in their teenagers. The ones on TikTok are all ages, but it used to be over 40, and now it's pretty much mostly under 30. They're knowledgeable. Uh, they, they know about, like I said, they know about their son. They, they'll tell me, well, my son is here. Why isn't this happening? Uh, you know, I said, beats me. No, I don't know. Yeah, I think that, you know, the age of information and the age of everything at our fingertips has helped people get access to the information. They just don't always know how to interpret it or absorb it in a way that makes sense to them. So having people that have taken that time of decades of experience walk them through it is really helpful and i think right now especially like the spiritualism and new age oh yeah that's a key really word. trending so yeah, you notice that spiritual never heard it very much up until a few years ago but it is like these companies are adding their spiritual readers for you know we're like a unique brand here and it just becomes so i think i think this is hotter than it was back and back in the 80s and 90s, it was all about, that was our only, we didn't have all this internet stuff. We didn't have anything but the telephone. So the telephone, even TV was okay, but the the main communication was really on the telephone. So that's why they always have these hotlines on the phone. And I do, the company I work for, I do text too. We actually type back and forth. And I have to always tell them in the beginning, now, this is going to take longer than if you called me on the phone. I'm really honest with him is because sometimes somebody got mad because after one minute, I didn't tell, I didn't give her answers to everything after she had written me. And there was one, I'm sorry, there was one minute total of two minutes. And she said, well, you didn't answer my question. And so I wrote her back and I said, give me some more time. This has been unfair to me. And she did. And we've stayed in touch for a while. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely kind of an impatient era because everything is so quick at our fingertips. But don't you find, let me tell you, if this happened to you, have you gone online to order something or to do something and there's a glitch and it's not moved, you move on to the next one. A lot of people, you know, I'm not going to see her fool around with this. I'll go with another company. You've done that before. We all have done that. And that's why I have, when I fix my website, everything is, I, I made a mistake the first time around last year and had a two-step process. People ordered all these charts and nobody paid for them. It was very bizarre, okay? I know, they had their information, everything about them, they ordered the chart and they had to hit another button to pay. So I went back to that, I paid some more money. I Everything is a one-stop shopping, bang. Okay, they hit that and they get to order from any credit card they have, any pay, all the different, they have different, like a lot of different ways to pay. And I haven't had a problem with it since because they're impatient. They don't want to have to worry about the person with the second button. You know, Carol, I also want to like take a step back too, because you said something about the spiritualism is it's something fairly new. That word is being thrown around a lot. It's like the new buzzword. But, you know, from my perspective, I think it's interesting because we've got a few things unfolding. Um, and we look at like the decades of what's happened in the religious communities where, you know, and, and something you said even earlier, people are calling in not for bad news. I don't think anybody wants to just call in and voluntarily hear bad news. They right. want to hear potentially what's good, what's good that's going to happen. And unfortunately, in the past, a lot of different religions are very like fire and brimstone. So it can be really just intense and uncomfortable. And so I think with the age of information where everything's at our fingertips and we have alternative paths now to, like you said, spiritualism, to feeling good within ourselves, our energy and our, our whatever we want to call it, our soul, our spirit, and wanting that alternative path to feel healing in there without having to identify it to something specific through like right. different religions. And We're getting so, more in touch with ourselves. 
Yeah. And I think we discussed this a few over the past few seasons is that there is like this awakening that's going on with people. They do want to connect again. They do want to see what's out there beyond what we see. Because we become a disconnect with, mm -hmm. you know, with the um, cell phones, with texting, with uh, so many ways to communicate that you you don't even have to talk or you don't have to get together. And at meetings, Zoom meetings, nobody has to get together as much anymore and talk in person. They go to their Zoom online meetings and do everything. And when you have to be, um, and I mean, listen, I do charts that way with videos and meetings too. And I have gotten away from doing astrology in person. It is not profitable. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of time, you know, because even if I get paid well, let's say I have to drive somewhere and drive back. And I also, I can't say, well, your hour and 15 minutes is up and walk out. Whereas I can time it when I do it in a meeting or even though I do phone conversations and I was charging for a half hour and they both lasted till an hour. And that was, I knew they would because people, I didn't want to cut, I would never cut them off because they wanted to talk some more, which, and which was just fine with me. Yeah. So I think that we are in this hurry up and let's get this done sort of mood in life. And even though I'm of an older generation than you, I'm part of that. I am too, you know, and I do know, I, this is just sort of off the track. I, I was thinking about it this morning, how they always say, ask a busy person if you want to get something done. And the reality is when you don't have enough to do, you're really busy. And when you have a lot to do, you're not so busy mentally. Do you know what I'm saying? Because when you have a lot to do, you could take in one more thing. And if you only have like two things to do in, in five hours, well, you don't, oh, you're too busy. I can't do that. I, I have been there. We want to fill our time up. And we, when we have empty time, like if you, let's say you're going out and you know it takes you maybe 15 minutes to get ready, but you'll leave a two hour gap in there to get ready, but you don't need. There, I, this, I'm just saying it is, we have a different concept about time. And I think that people are in a hurry all the, they, they still, they're always in a hurry. I think too, we keep ourselves busy because we want to feel like we have a purpose. I think when we're left alone to our own devices for far too long, we start to question ourselves. We start to question our purpose and it becomes something where it eats us up. I think that there are a lot of self-help books out there and a lot of workshops oh on how God. to heal yourself and how to how to become something because I think right now we are at an age where people feel lost. A lot more people feel lost. Yes. Well, don't you notice, I, I just laugh. There used to be, oh, let's say you went to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Today, you've got a coach for going on a diet, a health coach. You've got a coach for feeling lost. You have a coach for getting back your self-esteem. I mean, I read it online. There's like 50 different types of coaches to go to. And I think, where do you go? And then in the, in the medical field, there are, beside doctors and nurses, there are all kinds of different um, specialists for an OR room. And then there's one that does this. There's one that turns the knob on the door and the other one shuts the door. You know what I mean? There's, there are so many choices today from the cereal department at the grocery store that used to have six cereals to like 200. And I think what happens, I, I was getting to the point of this, is that we have too many decisions to make in life, okay? We don't, we used to have a whole lot less decisions. And today, if you want a pair of white pants, they come short, long, tight, big. I mean, you know what I mean? There's just so many, what do you want? I think it's overwhelming. I do, I do. Yeah, a lot of people experience decision paralysis. Yes. Um, I, it's, I, it's a decision-making paralysis is a thing. Oh, I believe um, it. I have it naturally. I'm, you know, it's my birthday month. And I talked to another Libra. I said, do you suffer from indecision? <laughs> she said, Not for important things. I decided we were going to move, we were buying houses, but what am I going to fix for dinner tonight? Or in a restaurant, I go through horror. I can't make up my mind. I think yeah. we definitely have a lot more options. And I think yeah. that's directly related to, we have a lot more people. So there's, you know, people are able to express <laughs> themselves in any way they want. You have the, you know, designers who are like, I'm going to create 50 versions of the white pants, right? Because there's so many cooks in that kitchen. And so I mean, it exactly. definitely the options are out there. And right. I have you to, I liked it when you could buy 
an apple pie. If you bought an apple pie, it had a crust on it. Then there's new ones with this. And there, I'm, I'm just using it as a poor example. All kinds of apple pies that you can buy, you know, and all that. You know, so you know, what I, one thing I'd like to talk about today, because I think it's of interest to people, if it be okay, mm -hmm. is, is astrology compatibility. Okay. Because I think that if that's okay, I was thinking. Yeah, absolutely. Go for yeah. it. So everyone thinks compatibility in astrology is just your sun sign. Okay, you're a Leo, I'm a Libra. So does that mean that we're going to be good friends? Well, I don't know. But I think that when I look at the moon signs, which is your emotional personality. So how does your emotional personality work with your own sun sign? Like I'm a Virgo moon, for example. So that's very practical, very, very health oriented, very organized. And my Libra is very frivolous and jumping around. So how do these two work together? And who am I going to be attracted to? Is it a Virgo, a Libra? So my Libra personality is no longer the same as it was five minutes ago because of that. And my rising sign is Virgo. I'm so overly organized that I can't find which file I put things in. <laughs> I have so many files. And then I have my, my Mercury, which tells me how I communicate. And that's in Libra. So am I going to get along with another Libra or air sign like Aquarius or Gemini? Because we all are, we all think intellectually. So then there's Venus, your love nature. How do you respond in love? Scorpios are intense in their love. And Aquarius is a, are kind of a whole hub. I have six things I put together. Sun, moon, rising. And I put Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And Venus, of course, your love nature, Mars is your energy, mental, physical, emotional, and, and Mercury is how you communicate. Those are the three things that matter in a relationship, how you communicate, how you love each other, and the energy that you put into the relationship and compromise. So I take all six of these and I jumble them all up together and decide, and they don't all have to be the same, but they have to have like, you're a Leo. And I think that maybe you would get along with somebody who has a Leo moon sign. I will look for that repetition because Leo and Sagittarius are both fire signs. So you'll get along with Sagittarians, Leos, and Aries in some area. So it's very complicated. So when people tell me I'm a Gemini and I'm in love with the Scorpio, is it good? Is it good? Is it good? I said, well, maybe you better tell me <laughs> oh, because I feel like let's look into your whole chart. So there's a lot of, a lot of synastry. They call it synastry when your charts go together. And sometimes the worst aspects in certain areas make the best relationships. But you, I have to know that. You can't have somebody that doesn't know astrology say to you, well, you've got a Scorpio moon and you're with a Gemini. It's not going to work because that's not all that's necessary. So without getting too complicated, it's all about mix and matching. I mix and match the signs to see how they work together. Yeah, and I think that's where I have always kind of come uh, to an impasse with where I stand. Like, how do I, how firmly do I understand and believe in astrology is specifically with the horoscopes? Because I wonder with how people, like, there are so many people born on the same day at the same exact time and finding that they have like, the same personality. That's a lot of people to say that they have the same personality. It's so not, it's, it, but I do find, and if you like for, for fun, mm -hmm. I'll go through some of the traits of each sign that I see almost all the time, regardless of everything else on their chart. There are some traits. It is, and then people say, well, you know, uh, Venus is, what is it? Like, let me see, Neptune is in Virgo. So that's kind of bad luck for me. Well, Neptune isn't a sign for up to 14 years. I hope not. Do you know what I mean? And there is no abs absolutes in astrology. There's no such thing. And I do a lot of forecasting for people. Sometimes they will order a chart and that's all they want to know is what's going to happen for the year. And so there's just so many different ways to go with it. But I think that pop astrology is at what is your, remember the old thing, what's your, I don't, what's your sign? Mm -hmm. I ask people when's their birthday. I refuse to say what's your sign. <laughs> yeah, I refuse that. Leo's like example. Okay, there are loud and uh, boisterous and outgoing Leos and there's very quiet Leos, but they always are seen and heard. They always make their presence one way or another. That's like that one of the, the absolutes about Leos. I like to start with Aries. They always want to be first at everything. I have never known an Aries that didn't want to push their way to the front, to, to be at the front. Yeah. 
And Tauruses are not stubborn. That's not it. But Tauruses are they're they're well, they're an Earth sign. They're very pragmatic. I'm just going to say that they they follow a path and generally very soft spoken, and they generally don't get angry and yell and scream at all. And Gemini's all are outgoing, want to do this. They want to do everything that they possibly can. And it's very hard for them to settle into one relationship. And cancer people do not stay home and they do not just necessarily love to cook, but they are the most financially successful sign on the Zodiac. People don't know that, but that's particularly cancer women. They're so driven and they know what they're doing. And they always, I, every cancer woman I've known has been extremely successful in what they've done. And then we talked Leo, I mentioned, and Virgos, they're not, they always get blamed for being nitpicky. They're demanding though. Leo, you know, Virgos can be very demanding in a very quiet way. And they want to get people to do for them all the time. And then Libras, we are indecisive, but we're people pleasers. You know, if I hurt somebody's feelings, I just want to go hide my head. I feel so bad. And most Libras are like that. And Scorpios are sneaky. <laughs> you know, they are, they're said to be intense and whatever. It's just that they, they take life very hard. You'll meet a Scorpio with a really good sense of humor, but you'll rarely meet one that isn't extremely intense about life and also is just, is not very flexible. They are not flexible sign. <laughs> and Sagittarians get their foot in their mouth all the time because they always have some little thing to say or something. And they can be, they, uh, their filter system is not too good. And then we have um, Capricorns. I've never, uh, Capricorns, they're always said to be organized and planning ahead and doing that, but they can be real, I don't want to use the word, I'm going to use the word taciturn, Saturnine, because they're ruled by Saturn. They can just get quiet and not talk and not communicate at all. And they do that a lot. And Aquarians are nuts. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do you, because I know you said we, uh, you know, we have free will. All you can do is kind of give here's, here's a presentation, but ultimately we have free will. So do you find, or I guess, do you believe that people that have these like predispositions to these personalities, if they are traits that they do not enjoy can overcome those? It's a really good question. And I think they can, if they want to, but I feel that I know this sounds really strange, but people who are, let's say, mean and bullying, they enjoy that. They don't want to change. They they don't look at themselves as bully. They look at themselves as a top gun guy that can go around and do whatever they want and say. They don't use the word bully. They would hate that word. They just feel like they're in control and they can control everything around them just the way that they want to do it. And can you change? There's some, I mean, if you're a worrier, it's really hard to change that. Okay. But yeah, I do. I think for the most part, what if it's something that I have changed in something that I may not always feel it inside, but I will express the change because I think I should or I will. So changing your innate personality, you know, that is a I, that is such a tough question. And I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I think we are born with what we are and who we are, but we can modify it, make it better and not dwell on what, what it is. Is that clear? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So when I first met my second husband, he talked about himself all the time and never asked me anything at all. And he learned over the years. Now, when I come home, how did it go? Did you enjoy yourself? What's going on? He's learned how to be more about outside of himself. So you can change. Because I pointed it out to him. I said, I had a second date with him or something. I said, I don't want to go out with you anymore. All you do is talk about yourself. So he called me on the phone and left a message and say, hi, Carol, I've called. I want to talk all about you. <laughs> he was just, and he always has got me with a sense of humor. He's gotten me out. Yeah. And there are certain signs in the Zodiac that fall into these categories too. Somebody asked me, who's the most flexible sign of the Zodiac? I had to think about that for a while. And I'm going to say it's probably Aquarians. They will flex. They'll go along with, you yeah, need to make a change. You need to do something. They'll usually go along with you pretty well. And the ones that really have the worst time doing it are Virgos and um, Cancer and Taurus. Now, they always say is that the, there's fixed signs, there's mutable signs and cardinal signs. The cardinal signs are 
They are the ones that um, are the beginning. They start everything. The mutables are able to make changes and are flexible. And the fixed ones don't want to change at all. So like you are, let me see, you're a fixed sign. You are a fixed. I am cardinal. And it doesn't mean that you're never going to start anything. That's another thing that's very generalized. We're talking about, you know, four zodiac signs. And still, even though it's narrowed down a little bit, not all of these are going to be a certain way. And another thing is, too, someone will say they're on the cusp. There, there's no cusp, in my opinion. You're one sign or another. If you're born the first 10 days of the sign, you're very strong in that sign. Like a Leo, you're born, what day were you born again? July 26th. Of oh, July. Okay, July. I'm sorry, July 20. You were born the first 10 days of the sign, so you are a very strong Leo. If you're born the second 10 days, the next fire sign, which is Sagittarius, you pick up Sagittarius traits. And the third one, you pick up Aries traits with your, the last 10 days. But the reality is we have traits. Everybody has traits from every sign in the Zodiac. But you have predominantly more of a certain type. Like I have really seen a jovial, fun-loving Capricorn. But there has to be a few of them out there somewhere. So it is too general. And I think that a strong, that's why doing a chart to, if I did your reading for you to duplicate your chart would take 25,000 years. That's how unique you are in astrology. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole lot better than having one twelfth of the population all be um, serial killers or something, you know. Yeah. So do you find that doing all of these charts back to back to back and how much you've answered these lines over the decades, does that take a toll on your energy? Like it does no. it deplete you to do no. that? No, no, I, because I, um, not even the, the calls don't either. Sometimes when I get off a call, so and I've had somebody really tough, really, I mean, they yell, they yell at me and they're, I, they accuse me or I'll say nasty things or whatever, not real bad. Cause I, I would get off the call. Sometimes I get off the phone and I'm like, it takes me about a few minutes to, to recover. But when I do charts, no, I don't look at them that way. I'm looking at them as discovering a person, helping them out. And they're all different. And I don't see any like terribly negative things or feel it. I do not, in, I do not internalize charts at all. I don't. But okay. I read them with honesty and I face up to what's on there. And sometimes I, I do some research. When I do a longer reading, I want to be sure I cover everything because I can't remember everything. And I have a couple of places online that I trust and I will look up like I want, let's just example, let's say the moon is in your fourth house. Now I could probably tell you right off the bat what that means, but I want to look up and be sure that I didn't leave out something that's important. So I will look it up. You said you're also empathic and you've got like the intuitive. So does that ever create connections that, um, like lingering yes. connections. Yeah. What happens is that helps me read the charts because I, and these are people I never get to talk to. I don't have, at least on the, on the phone calls, I have a voice. This mm -hmm. is something I, they just, I, sometimes by the way they write, if I ask them to tell me information, I can tell just what kind of person, how they feel about life, by the way they form their sentences. So that helps me. But other than that, I just have a birthday at a time and a place. I don't have any other information. I know their age. I don't know what they look like. You know, um, there might be somebody that's really absolutely gorgeous. And she's concerned about all these different men in her life. You know, it just, it's, it depends. So for the ones that do create connections with you, how do you kind of cleanse yourself of those connections? I take a bath. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, that's straightforward. I've heard running water does no, have an effect. Um, I go eat. No, I just, I don't, I don't have to. I don't, I just feel, I sometimes, if I do a couple of charts in the, mor charts in the morning, I'm physically tired mm -hmm. because I've been talking for, you know, for like 45 minutes, long time. And so I'm tired of, even after I do, like we're, we're talking a lot here, I'll go have a drink of water and sit down for a minute and then I'm, I'm fine. But I get, I get really early. I get up at 3.30 in the morning and I love the morning because I can just sit here quietly. I get everything done I want to, all the busy work that I have to do for the day. And then of course, by one or two o'clock, I've already put in a long day. So I will go and maybe read and take a little nap 
And of course I go out to lunch with my girlfriends. I do fun stuff too. So it kind of just naturally clears those connections. Yeah. I, I don't, I just, it's really something that I really haven't given a lot of thought to. And some of the calls are upsetting, but they, I don't buy into them on a personal level. I won't allow that. But I do try to get into their heads and understand, you know, when they're writing to me, how they feel and how painful the pain that they're going through. And I'm able to feel it and I'm able to let it go afterwards. That's really, that's yeah. awesome. I'm not sure I would have that ability to, <laughs> to shake yeah, that, that off. <laughs> that I can do with, yeah. That's, that's a, it sounds like this really is a field that is your space because I think that like, I, I would, I put myself in those shoes and wonder like, how would I, if I were working with people, especially because people coming to you, aren't coming in, like my life is perfect. I am on the right direction. I've got all the answers. These are people that are really struggling with something, right? They're looking for answers for something. So, yeah, they all are. Um, and I have a few that would, that used to call me a lot and they've stopped calling me and I've written to them and we write back and forth a little bit. And they've cleared up their problems. They're doing really well. So they don't need me anymore. And that's okay. Cause they know I'm there. If something comes up, there are a lot of them that just get on and they have two minutes. And they want to know, is Johnny coming back to me? Mm-hmm. And um, I have to ask a few questions and they get, they don't like it, but I ask questions because I, I got to know something. I have to have something to, to grab on to. Right. And the basic thing is that most of these men or whatever, do come back in one way or another, not necessarily the way they want them to. Yeah. That's like, that's, oh man, it's great. You know, whether it's astrology or whether it's therapy or whether it's, we have so many, like you said, so many types of life coaches out there, spiritual coaches, coaches for our body, physically, mentally, emotionally. like we have it, but people have different avenues of finding that spirituality yeah. or the answers or the the help that they need, right? Whether it's going to the astrologer, yeah. whether it's going to, but I really, yeah, they these need coaches. help. These coaches get a six month certificate and they're acting like psychiatrists. And also these health coaches, they get a six month certificate. What do they really know about dieting and food? It takes a lot of years. I'm not an expert, but all my life, I've written a couple books on staying healthy and eating right. And I don't have all the answers and I'm always studying more. And I do know that when you eat healthy, your percentages are that you're going to live a healthy life and you're going to feel better. That's the big thing. Not that you're going to live longer, but you're going to function better and feel better. You're going to sleep better. You're going to live better. You're going to be happier because you're not filling your body full of sugar and bad and preservatives and stuff. Because we live in a toxic world today. You know that. And food is all heavily, heavily preserved. So I always say, whatever you eat that doesn't have a label is good for you. If there's no label, then it's healthy food. Yeah. But like you said, any body is different. And so some people can't process, even if it's healthy, whole fruits, it's still sugars. They can't process as much as maybe someone who doesn't. Oh, no, I know that. Such a common sense. Yeah. And so for me, I think that's kind of where these coaches come in. Like you said, using the common sense to discern, is this person full of baloney? Exactly. Or Yeah. Or yeah. listening to your intuition is what they're telling me. Is that some kind of truth that's speaking to me? I think that it really just comes down to people learning to connect into their personal truths because each yeah. person's truth is different. So does that ring of of something inside of me that says that is truth. That is what a message that I'm supposed to hear. It's hard and it gets expensive because not everybody is paying for, you know, well, I'll be your spiritual coach and teach you the ways of the shaman for 99, 99 a month. And well, I'll be your fitness coach and teach you this for $400 a month. Are these ads, even when you join a Facebook group, you want to get, they have money for joining the top one, pay another $15 a month and we'll give you A, B, C, D. And there's so many offers on stuff online, constant offers. I get them in my email. I get them everywhere I go. Everybody's got something to sell. They got something to add. If you uh, join a group, well, why don't you join the, the top of the group and pay more and get more out of the group? Why, not, why can't you get that from just belonging to the group? but it's not like that anymore. People have their hands out. There's a lot of money. They're not afraid to charge it and people go for it. They think, oh, this is my spot. 
you know, and we're all guilty of, of something similar. So I don't know what person thinks that an astrologer, what makes them good. There is some kind of certification, which I never got years ago. And I don't think that has anything to do with it. I think it's about talking to people and dealing with people at a level that using their, their signs and the planets, I believe that. Because I, I don't look at my own chart very often. <laughs> I don't want to see that, no. <laughs> well, I think it's like you said, it's about compatibility, whether it's a business, professional, personal relationship. At the end of the day, it's still about compatibility. You know, it may not be the astrologer that connects with you, that that doesn't mean all astrology is bad or all, right. you know, XYZ is bad. It's just finding the compatibility of what individual what works. works with yeah. you. I, a friend said to me one time, and I love this comment better than anything. He said, there are some people you like, no matter what they do. There's some people you don't like, no matter what they do. So the person you like can do some terrible things, but you like them. I think about that a lot. There are people that are way off base, kind of weird this, that, but I like them. It, it, that's, that's the same thing, who you're going to connect with. And of course, I only connect through the internet and they, have, they connect with me through my voice. If they like my voice and I like the way that I talk and on the video, if, the, if they like the way I look, then they connect with me. People need to be talked to lovingly and caringly. I did that only yelled at one woman on the phone. And all I said to her, I said, you got to get off my back. I said, you are, you got to listen to me. I want you to be quiet. And I want you to listen to what I have to say. She got me so riled up. Trust me, she did before. She's just screaming at me. And she calmed down. And we're fine. And she called me back another time. So, but I don't usually do that. Most people are so nice to me and so kind and so appreciative of what I say that I rarely get somebody that I have to come, I have to do that to. So I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. I think this has been really awesome. I appreciate you coming on. Are there any last thoughts that you want to share? You've, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I've always been kind of like iffy when it comes to astrology. I'm like, I'm not sure I buy that, but the more conversations that I've had with you, the more I kind of lean into, you know what? There could be something very valuable there that well, that for myself sense. personally, not yeah. I'm, I think it's valuable for a lot of right. people, but for myself, I feel like, yeah. wow. But thank you. No, I've just been, I've just enjoyed talking with you today. It's been a lot of fun and you've asked very good questions. <laughs> Go on. I love it. I love it. I hope to come back again someday. Maybe we'll do a chart on what's going on in the world. That would and, be and can, yes, we can do something like that sometime. And no, I'm just, I'm really happy to be here other than they know where to find me on my, my new website, which is, I, my name is Carol Starr with two R's. And my website is carolstarastrologer.com. You can't get easier than that. <laughs> that helps. No, you can't. <laughs> carolstarastrologer.com. But thank you for inviting me. I'm very honored and very pleased that you did. Thank you so much for coming on. All right, John Thomas, bring us home. All right. Thank you again, Miss Carol, for coming on. We appreciate it. And thank you to all of our listeners for listening to this episode of Three Haunted Podcast with your hosts. I'm John Thomas. I am Ashley Lunar Goddess. And if you have any questions, episode suggestions, or comments, please feel free to email us at threehauntedpodcast at gmail.com. And like always, we ask if you haven't done so already, please like, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media. You don't want to miss one crazy moment. Until next time.